So how we are able to derive a formula that d sine theta is equals to n lambda. So derivation of this formula, we can derive this formula for the Young's double slit experiment as well, two slits, or we can also use a diffraction grating. Example, we have the two slits, slit one and slit two which are separated by a distance d or you can also use the letter a for this distance. So this is d. So And we are observing on the screen on the screen we are observing the interference pattern the maximas and the minimas So we have a central maxima, then we have minima. And these are the part differences. So the central maxima, the part difference is zero wavelength. The first minima, the part difference will be 1 by 2 wavelength, lambda by 2. The first maximum of part difference will be lambda. Then again, the part difference will be 3 by 2 lambda, means 1.5 wavelength. Then the part difference will be 2 lambda. The part difference will be 5 by 2 lambda, means 2.5 lambda, and the part difference will be 3 lambda. So, see a wave, for example, we want to observe or we want to derive a formula for say this fringe and we call that as an order of image like the here n is equals to 0, this is n is equals to 1, this is n is the second order image and this is n is equals to 3. So, two waves are traveling. And we are observing, say one wave travel in this way, another wave travel. So the two waves travel and interfere and there's a constructive interference. According to the position of the fringe, the part difference should be two lambda. If the distance moved by the wave from source one and the source two, this like example, the black lines are representing the distance moved by the two waves from source from slit one and from slit two, and it reach a point where they interfere and there's a constructive interference and we observe a maximum. What is the part difference here? Look, if I want to compare, what is the additional extra distance? Like if I use the letters to represent the position, say this is A and this one is B. And this one is example C and this is D. So what is the additional length you think is covered from source one to source two, like the screen and source two to the screen. So what is this additional part which is covered by this? So this is the additional part. Like this is the additional part, means this is a part difference. The additional distance which is covered by the wave from slit 2 to the screen, this is the additional part. These two are like same length. So the additional part, the extra part is actually the part difference. What is this distance? If we say this angle is theta, so what will be this component with an angle? Is it sine or cosine? Is it sine or cosine? So the one which is with an angle, what we call? We call that as a sine, a cosine. So this will be equal to d cosine theta. And what about this distance? So this distance will be equal to d sine theta. So the part difference, the additional distance which one wave cover more than the other, that is actually the part difference. So in this example, the part difference is d sine theta. So I can say the part difference is d sine theta. And what is this part difference is equal to what is this part difference equal to? Like if I'm observing a second maxima here. So this part difference is equals to 
to lambda. So if I journalize this equation, is it clear? Like how d sine theta is two lambda? Is it uh, clear how the d sine theta is equal to two lambda according to this? So the part difference is d sine theta according to the figure and according to this position, the maxima, the part difference should be 2 lambda. So I can say that d sine theta is 2 lambda. Part difference means the additional distance which one wave cover than the other. So on the screen, when they meet, according to the position on the screen, it means the part difference should be 2 lambda. And according to the distance moved by the two waves, the additional part with one wave cover more than the other is actually d sine theta. So I can compare that d sine theta is equal to 2 lambda. So using this, if I know the spacing between the slits, I can work out the wavelength. Or if I know the wavelength, I can work out the spacing between the slits. What if we are focusing on another, like example, say this is lambda by 2. This will be lambda. This will be 3 by 2 lambda. This will be 2 lambda. This will be 5 by 2 lambda. And this is 3 lambda. So if we take another example. So observing, let's take, we are observing an interference at this point, which is a destructive interference, okay? So the two waves travel. So this is a distance traveled by one wave and this is a distance traveled by another wave and they meet at this point and as a result of these interference, we have a destructive interference, okay? So if I say what is the additional distance covered what is the part difference in terms of length? What is the additional distance covered by one wave than the other, like at extra distance? So if we draw this line and we say these two length, two lines are same length. So this is the additional distance which is covered by the wave. And if this angle is theta, so this will be d cosine theta and this will be equals to d sine theta. So again, d sine theta is there is the additional distance or we can say d sine theta is a part difference. And according to this position, because it's a destructive interference and for this destructive interference to happen or occur, the part difference should be equals to 3 lambda by 2. So I can say that in this case, the d sine theta is equals to 3 lambda by so, using, so d sin theta is actually the part difference, the additional distance which one wave cover more than the other and it will be equals to either an integer of the wavelength or a, a, a n plus half wavelength depending on which image we are focusing on. How would being destructive or not effect? No, it will because d sine theta is equal to 3 by 3 lambda by 2. So when you use this formula, you can identify the, the spacing between the slits or the wavelength of the wave which is used. Where n is known as the order of the image. So as you can see, like example, this is a slit one and this one is a slit two. We are observing at a position P where these two waves interfere. So where these two waves interfere with each other, like example, this is source one, wave from source one and this is wave from source two. So what is the, this distance between the two slits is D. So what is, if I draw the line here, what is the additional distance covered by one wave compared to the other? That is, this is the additional distance. And this additional distance will always be equals to d sine theta, always. 
and depending on the order of the image, so if d sin theta will be equals to n lambda. So, if you have two slits, and we have source one, and we have source two. And th this is a screen. Here's a screen. And we are observing a maxima. So when we are observing a maxima, what is n here? n is equals to zero. If n is equals to zero, what is the part difference? The part difference should be zero lambda. Where n is equals to zero. Then we'll have a minima. If we have a minima, what is value of n? Or what is in terms of the part difference, the first minima? It means the part difference because there's a destructive interference. So the part difference should be lambda by two. So the part difference between the two waves should be half of wavelength. And the wave travel from source one and the wave travel from source two, they will travel different distances. So what is the additional distance covered by one wave compared to other? If we draw a line, like to make the equal lengths here. So if we draw the line, what is the additional distance covered by the wave in terms of the length? So this is the additional distance covered by one wave to the other. If this distance is D, here the angle with the is theta. So what is this component? This will be d cosine theta. And what is this component? This is d sine theta. So it means the additional distance which one wave cover more than the other is d sine theta. So when I write the equation here, I will write d sine theta according to this position. The d sine theta will be n by 2 lambda for this minima. But if I'm writing, is it clear? Yes, Hafsa. Sir, can I draw on the screen for a yes. second? Yes, sure. Can the line be like this and the path becomes this? The line, reason why we did not draw the line in this manner because we want to find additional distance which one wave cover than the other. Like example, if I have, this is from source one to the screen and this is a source two to the screen. So it means the wave from a source 2 is traveling or a slit 2 is traveling more distant than slit 1. That is why I was drawing the line from here. If it was slit 1 and slit 2 and the position where we are observing is down. So in that case, the wave from source slit 1 is traveling more distant than slit 2. In that case, we'll draw the line from slit position of slit 2 and that this will be the part difference. Here in this case, this is a part difference. So if you draw a line as you do here, if you draw a line as you do, so it means already the wave from source one or slit one is traveling a smaller distance. So this cannot be additional distance. The part difference is actually the additional distance which one wave cover more than the other. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So that's why we drew the line from S1 to S2 and we are finding what is the additional distance covered like if I say in terms of the values say this is three meters and say this is four meters so when I work out the part difference I will subtract so four meters minus three meters so I will get one meter what will be the one meter mean this distance will be one meter and this distance in terms of the angle of the from the position and the d that is always equals to d sine theta so whenever the wave passes through the slits the the part difference is always d sine theta and when they meet on the screen that part difference depending on the position where they meet on the screen if they meet at the central the part difference so in that case d sine theta will be zero 
But if they meet a position where it is a first maxima, the part difference will be lambda. If they meet a position where there is a second, so the part difference will be two lambda. So in a slits, the part difference changes as the distance, the position on the screen changes. But the part difference between the two slits will always be d sin theta. Where they meet on the screen, that will vary depending on the position. Like we have say maximas and minimas. So the equation will change. So if we take about central maxima, this is a central maxima. So in this case, the d sine theta, the part difference will be d sine theta, but d sine theta will be equals to zero. Why? Because the part difference is zero. But if I write an equation here for the first minima, the d sine theta will be n by two. When I write for a first maxima, in that case, the d sine theta will be equals to lambda. When I write the equation for the second maxima, a second minima, the d sine theta will be equals to three by two lambda. For a second maxima, the d sine theta is equals to two lambda and so on. For like, this is when we are going up. If we go down below the central maxima, so d sine theta will be what? The d sine theta will be equals to lambda by two. For the first maxima, d sine theta is equals to lambda. For the first minima, the d sine theta will be equals to three by two lambda. Then d sine theta will be equals to two lambda and so on. So the d sine theta remains same. Only difference what happened is the position changes. The position where the image is formed, that according to that position, the part difference comparison changes. So this is the central maxima. And the same theta can be taken because mathematically the two values will always be equal. So we can also take this as theta as well. So it will also give the same result. So if you take this, this theta can be represented by here as well. Like the same when we divide the part differences. Where these are called order of image, like this is a zero order image, this is a first order image, this is a second order image, and so on. And below that's a first order image, the second order image, and so on. Is it uh, clear, uh, this expression? Anyone having a doubt or a question till this point? For a wave, this is a specific part of a whole wave topic, comes especially as one. Yes, this is a specific part of a wave. As the one complete question is there about the diffraction. N lambda formula only works for a maxima. No, N lambda formula can be work for minima as well. If we, we can use, if it is a maxima, then we say D sine theta is N lambda. Like in that case, if it is maxima, we use a formula that d sine theta is equal to n lambda, where n is the order of image. And if it is, we are talking about minima, then the formula will become d sine theta is equals to n plus half lambda. So these are the two formulas, the part difference, where n is the order of image, n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. So we have a first order image, then we have a second order image, then third, like how to know the order of the image. The order of the image is depending on So this is the pattern we observe on the screen. So what is the order of the image? 
the central maxima that is a zero okay then the for this n is equals to one this will be n is equals to two this will be n is equals to three and so on n is equals to one n is equals to two and more as we go down or as we go up so if if we talk about the constructive interference, like where we have a maxima, we write d sine theta is equals to n lambda, where n is the order of the image. Like it can be a first order, it's zero order, first order, second order, third order, and so on. And this is actually like this is also in terms of the order because we want the wavelength to be. If it is a destructive interference, then we write d sine theta is equals to n plus half lambda. So when we write d sine theta is equals to n plus half lambda for a destructive interference, the first max first minima is zero, then this will be one, this will be two. Because and this will be one and this will be two. Because what we want, we want n plus half lambda. So if it is n plus half lambda, n is zero. So zero plus half lambda, so the part difference will be lambda by two. Then one plus half lambda, the part difference will be three by two lambda. Then two plus half lambda, the part difference will be five by two lambda. Is it uh, clear? So if it is a destructive interference, this is a general formula that d sine theta is n lambda where n is the order of image. And if it is a constructive interference, d sine theta is n lambda, where n is also an order of image. Any doubt in this, the formula, the derivation? So when we write this, yeah, n is equals to, yeah, this will be n is equals to zero as well. By mistake, I wrote one. This is n is equals to zero, and this is n is equals to one. So if it is a constructive interference, the part difference will be n lambda. And if it is a destructive interference, the part difference will be n plus half lambda. Where n is the order of the image, the central one we call zero, the first minima zero, the first maxima one, the first minima one, the first uh, second maxima two, the second minima two. And when you substitute, like example, same way, this will be zero, this n is equals to one, this n is equals to two, this n is equals to three and so on. Now, when you substitute the part difference according to this n, because it's a constructive, n is equals to zero. So if it's a constructive interference or a maxima, so for a maxima, we use this formula. And for a minima, we use n plus half lambda. So when there's a destruct constructive interference and the order of image is a zero order image, so the part difference is zero wavelength. Because it is n lambda, so zero time wavelength or zero wavelength is a part difference. Then we have a first, like a minima is there. So what we call, we call that also n is equals to zero. So zero plus half, but we'll use this formula because it's a minima. 
So 0 plus half, it means it will become lambda by 2. Then we substitute n is equals to 1. This is a maxima. So n is equals to 1. So this is equals to 1 lambda. Here, when we substitute for a destructive interference, So here n is equals to 1, so and it's a minima, so if it's a minima, we'll use this formula, the part difference, n plus half lambda. So 1 plus half, so means it will become 1 by 2 lambda. Here it's a maxima, so for a maxima, the part difference will be n lambda, so this will be 2 lambda. Again a minima, so 2 plus half, so this will become 2.5 or 5 by 2 lambda. That's how the part difference vary. Is it uh, clear? And whenever the slit spacing is there, so the part difference is always d sine theta. So we always say d sine theta is equals to n lambda if it is a constructive interference and d sine theta is equals to n plus half lambda if it is a destructive interference. So if we vary the distance of a wave for a constructive interference, is it possible that we can intentionally set up path of a 3 by 2? But uh, this is a highly coherent way uh, when Amant, your question is right, but the thing is, it will work only if we don't have a coherent wave. If we have a coherent wave, in that case, the whenever it's a part difference is a multiple of a wavelength, it will always be constructive because when a part difference is multiple of a wavelength, the crest will always join with the crest. So if the multiple wavelength is there, when it complete one wavelength, it can never be a destructive interference for a whole number. It 